Have you ever struggled to get Wi-Fi throughout your entire home? Well, what would you do if you had to get Wi-Fi from one building to another? Well, it's easy if you're ingenious. Welcome to DIY Garage. I'm your host, Kerry Holzman, and joining me today is Brian Slayman from Ingenious. Hey, Brian, welcome in. Thank you very much. I see we've got some what look like access points or wireless something here. That's right. Uh, so basically, um, you know, you run into a lot of situations where everybody has internet service in their home, and one of the things is they're trying to get internet service throughout the home, but the other thing is they're trying to get inter internet service beyond the home, um, and say to a, a remote location on their property, such as a, a garage or a workshop, or even a barn. So what they can effectively do is use two of these devices and um, actually create a wireless pipeline from their home to their remote building and provide that internet service within that remote building. So, for example, if you had a guest house or a detached garage or something and you just couldn't quite get your current Wi-Fi signal from inside of your home into that building, yeah. you would use a device like this. That's correct. So a lot of times uh, we run into situations where the, um, the, the owner, the homeowner, is trying to get that Wi-Fi in that secondary um, building. And what they try to do is they use the existing Wi-Fi uh, router or they'll even try to use repeaters. Um, to try to effectively get that signal to that uh, that remote building. And a lot of times it fails. Um, and, and just using the Wi-Fi router, the distance or the, the router can't um, penetrate through all the obstacles to that outdoor um, building and you never have a connection. With the repeater, you actually might be able to see the signal in the, the uh, secondary building, but the bandwidth is uh, compromised at that point. You're, you're basically cutting the bandwidth by 50 to 60 percent, uh, depending on the device that you're trying to do or use uh, to repeat that signal. Yeah, I'm not a fan of repeaters for that very reason. Yeah. So, you know, to, to sort of break this down a bit for our, our audience who's not real familiar with it, it, and correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is, and my experience has been, say I've got this router and I just can't reach a detached garage. Yep. The signal's not strong enough. So I buy a repeater, but the repeater needs to sit somewhere between the garage and the router. And That's it's right. going to connect to the router wirelessly. And the further it, away it is from the router, like anything else, the weaker the signal's going to be. The weaker the signal's going to be, the slower my connection's going to be. That's right. And that repeater is broadcasting in 360 degrees, which means it's broadcasting the same signal right back yeah. to the router where it's already covering that so you that's have right. signal overlap. Yep, that's right. So that's why I'm not a fan of repeaters. Whereas in this case, you're basically taking it, this from one point and beaming it directly to the other point. That's right. And so obviously we, we, this is called a wireless bridge because it's effectively like a virtual bridge. Yeah. It's a, a virtual pipeline. You're creating this pipeline from one point to a secondary point. And it's effective. You're not losing that bandwidth that we were just discussing. The, 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 uh, the job of these uh, bridges is to basically connect from one point to another point or a secondary point. They replace a cable. Yes, they it's do. It's like a wireless cable. Yeah. Right, so if I, if I wanted to run that Wi-Fi into my detached garage, I'd have to trench Yes. And get some special outdoor cable, and I'd have to get clearance from, you know, checking to see if there's gas lines in the yeah. ground and all that other stuff. But what I have a problem, I'm assuming this, this goes outside. Yes, that's right. And both sides. Yep. I mean, both locations. Both these items are, um, all of our outdoor devices are IP rated, um, which is an outdoor rating. These devices are IP55 rated. And we've installed outdoor devices anywhere from South America all the way up to Canada. And specifically, the IP55 rating is a, it's a weatherproof, waterproof uh, uh, type of housing. So yes, it can sit out outdoors during the whole year. Let me see if I've got this understanding. Okay. So I've got my router, my wireless router at my home. And I buy a pair of these, or they're sold as a pair. Yes. And I put one somewhere on the outside of my house and run a cable to my router. That's right. I go to the other building, let's call it my detached garage. I put, put it on the outside of the garage, and I run a cable then to where? To my laptop or you to can another actually router? Run, that's right. You can run it actually to multiple devices. You can run it to, like you said, a, a laptop a router, um, an access point, for example, even a printer. Any Ethernet device uh, 
and that secondary building you could connect it to if you wanted to. Um, what we find is a lot of customers will attach it to an access point, and so now they're rebroadcasting the signal within that building or that garage, and now they have Wi-Fi within that uh, garage. Or they can connect it to, say, a switch, for example, and that switch can then connect to multiple computers if you'd like. Um, so there's multiple devices that you can connect to. As long as it has an Ethernet port to it, um, you can connect to it. So then I could take my old router, and I could just simply turn off DHCP on it and not use the Internet port. Mm -hmm. Just use the other four ports plus the wireless. Mm -hmm. That's Not right. Business Is that yep. easy. We run into that situation every time. I mean, um, effectively, that's turning a router into an access point, if I'm not mistaken. It is. You could actually still use the routing function. You can create that firewall between in the garage if you want to. You can connect it to the WAN port of that router in that secondary uh, building and actually have that firewall there or a router. So you have another smaller network within your garage now if you wanted to be. You know, if you wanted to set that up, do you recommend a certain higher level of of a networking knowledge, or can the average consumer buy this and reasonably be expected to get it working? I would say, what we call as prosumer would be able to go into the device and actually be able to configure the device fairly easy. Um, we do have a technical support. We have online technical support, and we have um, a technical support number that would help with those configurations. Will they? Because that's not a real technical support issue. And Genius is very open in the way that we give you multiple multiple ways to be able to contact us and talk to um, a level one, a level two, even our field applications engineers. But at the end of the day, this device is really actually simple to uh, to set up. Well, first of all, I'm just kind of curious about weight. This is um, what is this maybe two pounds? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's with the, the stand on it, which, of course, it would have. And on the back, we've got... Uh, there's two ports. Right, so you're, you're basically you're going to take... The way the device gets power, for people who aren't familiar with it, is there's an adapter that you, you give power to the adapter. That's right. And the adapter adds that power to the network cable. That's right. So now you just have one cable. Usually, like anybody who's hooked up a router... Yeah. You've got your network cable and you've got your power. So the router needs to have power. Yeah, so what this adapter is doing is actually sending data to this device and also sending power to the device. So now you can actually run one cable to the device and you can run approximately 328 feet from this power, um, this PoE injector. So if you have to put it on a rooftop, for example, you can easily do that and you have uh, plenty of Ethernet cable to be able to run it to uh, those levels or those heights. But and that still only uses one Ethernet port. That's right. So you have a primary port and you have a secondary port. That primary port uh, actually feeds power and data to that uh, particular port. Uh, so now the device is functioning, it's turned on, it can, it can operate as normal. The secondary uh, port can actually just pass data or it can pass data and power. It just really depends on the deployment. So you could extend it on further? So you yeah. could hook up uh, quite a bit. We've had customers do up to nine links together. Wow. One link would be two of these devices uh, connecting at different, uh, different distances, different ranges, uh, with diff different speeds. And you could actually create you know, uh, several hops. And we've had customers do up to nine hops. The speed then doesn't degrade simply because you're adding more units. The speed is going to depend on the signal strength That's right. between each pair. That's right, yeah. So. As long as you have um, clear line of sight and you have a strong connection, that speed is not degraded. Rather than using like a repeater, um, you're not cutting that bandwidth at all. You're not cutting it by 50%. You're not cutting it by 60%. So you're effectively making these hops without losing any bandwidth whatsoever. You know, I noticed when you uh, were just holding this a minute ago, here on the side, uh, are these LEDs that light up that show that's signal right. strength? Yeah, that's right. So this, this product is actually specced to do about five mile links. So you can imagine five miles away, it's really hard to see the remote end. And so we added these LEDs to help, um, help understand if the signal strength is strong or if it's weak and to basically how to position the product. When we talk about uh, Wi-Fi, we always talk about speeds. Yeah. We haven't really uh, broached that topic yet. Uh, what is the, uh, the, the 802.11 speeds? that these achieve? So this uh, particular product, it's called our in-station AC product. And AC means it's AC technology. It's operating on uh, just 5 gigahertz. So the theoretical speed is 867 megabits per second. We've done some short distance te testing and about at about 500 feet, we've seen about 475 megabits per second on average. Um, so you're, you are creating a uh, very fast pipeline when you connect two of these devices uh, together. 
So it's spec at 867, but um, actual speeds are uh, anywhere from uh, at long distances, maybe 50 megabits per second, all the way up to maybe 500 megabits per second. Right, and, and, and just like something you clarified to me earlier with regards to when you see these AC, 1700, AC, 1900, yeah. and your immediate, my immediate reaction was, why is that number so low? Yeah. They add the numbers of the 2.4 gigahertz yeah. network and the 5 gigahertz network together. There's no 2.4 gigahertz here That's because right. trying to go these extreme distances, you really need to use that 5 gigahertz because 2.4 is too busy. Actually, 2.4 does actually travel further um, but as a lot of people are experiencing, you see a lot more interference on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band. So um, a lot of people are leaning on the 5 gigahertz um, band. Um, so you see today all yeah, the routers. It's, it's not as crowded, right? The That's five right. Gigahertz band. Yep. The 5 gigahertz is not as crowded. There's more channels to choose from. There's no co-interference. Well, I shouldn't say no. There's less co-interference between the channels. So you have more uh, non-overlapping channels within the 5 gigahertz band. And that's why um, a lot of companies are leaning on the 5 gigahertz frequency band because you have those advancements. I can imagine there are a number of use case scenarios where this is really going to save somebody's bacon. Yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking whether it's a consumer who's got, for example, a detached garage and the Wi-Fi just doesn't quite reach there. Yep. You know, I've got experience there where businesses, they have a warehouse in the back or, mm -hmm. and they have to run these big outdoor cables are very expensive just to provide uh, the phone lines. Yeah. And then again, another one for providing the, uh, the network access. And I imagine even in surveillance, things like this, where you want cameras in remote locations, yeah. this would be very beneficial for that. Yeah, so you know, if you're attempting to connect two buildings in a business case or in a residence, you're connecting that detached barn. We hear about barns all, all the time, um, and they want to wirelessly connect to the barn. Um, you know, they'll have to trench, they'll have to lay down cable, they might want fiber. Um, um. But is it as fast and as secure? It is actually, because when you set this device up, you're basically setting this device up in what we call as a peer-to-peer -peer kind of mode or a point-to-point -point mode. And what you're doing is, when you do that, you're locking the devices down to talk to uh, one another only. Not It's not open to just anybody to be Somebody able to Somebody driving in. by. Yeah, there's no war driving or there's nobody driving up and trying to tap into your internet at that point. Um, first, you're operating on 5 gigahertz. It's um, AC technology. You basically, the way you lock it down is you use WPA security as normal. You can use uh, BSSID, which uh, is basically the broad broadcast signal, but you can turn the broadcast signal off so nobody driving by can see the signal itself. Um, in addition to that, you can um, lock it down even further with MAC addresses. So you can actually configure this device with that device's MAC address and vice versa. And so it knows I'm only talking to this guy and this guy can say I'm only talking to this particular device. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. So it really seems like a no-brainer. If that's a, a problem you're trying to solve, this is the solution. That's right. So you're avoiding the trenching, you're avoiding running the cable, you're avoiding um, HOA permits or city permits, you're avoiding all those things. It's a very co cost effective um, uh, uh, device that um, helps in a lot of cases. It's very cost effective, uh, it's very time um, uh, effective, I guess I could say, time savings, I should say, uh, to use a device or devices like this. Faster, easier, cheaper. That's right. Now this product is available now? It is. It's available now. Um, it comes with a POE injector. The actual devices themselves, the mounting kits, uh, has a wall mount, post mount uh, that you can use. Um, so it comes with um, all everything that you would need, basically. Except the cable. Except for the cable. Because you wouldn't know how long of a cable yeah. I would need. Yeah. We attempted to try that, but it yeah, got a little that, ridiculous. Yeah, that would <laughs> No, it, that, it sounds wonderful. And thank you so much for coming in today and telling us all about it. Thank you very much. We're happy to be here. Well, that's going to wrap up this episode of DIY Garage. We hope you've enjoyed it, and if so, be sure and click like and subscribe. And be sure and check out our other great content at Newegg.tv. For DIY Garage and Newegg TV, I'm Kerry Holzman, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.